I remember getting that sinking feeling in my stomach when I'd walk into my hunting area and realize that it was, there was trees marked and there's a skitter in there. They're starting to cut down and, and log an area. And what I ended up realizing is that can actually be a benefit to you. Is it going to change things? Yes, it hundred percent is, but these logging cuts, especially the fresh ones can provide great food sources from the, the tops when they cut them down. And as those timber cuts get older, they just get better at providing bedding cover, more additional food sources. And the reason for that, so when you look at an old growth forest or a, um, a forest that has a lot of big trees, you notice underneath it, there's not much other species of plants and, and trees that are growing. The vegetation cover underneath is pretty bare and open. And all of that looks nice and pretty. That's not as healthy as an area that has a lot of those big trees cut down, allowing the, the new growth to sprout, get sunlight and grow up. And that's where it creates a bunch of food sources for deer and other animals as well. If you find a fresh logging operation right around when there's a cold spell hitting, if you, one thing that I've done in the past is actually even talk to the loggers, see what they're seeing for deer sign. But as soon as those tops come down are the best time to catch them feeding on them rather than historical tops that have been laying there for a while. All different years of timber cuts provide food sources for the deer. But specifically when you're looking at the timber cuts that are in the zero to three year old range, the deer are focusing on a lot of the tops that they cut down and left. So the, the loggers didn't take some of the tops of the trees and also some of the grasses that are, you can see behind me that are coming up. The deer are feeding through those specifically focusing on these areas in the winter months, cold weather, they seem to migrate to these areas to feed. When logging cuts get over eight years old, they tend to still hold a lot of bedding, even though it kind of drowns out the undergrowth underneath it. There's not as much browse for food as there is in the, the ones in that three to eight year old range, but the deer still love to bed, especially on the outskirts of them. Does will be bedded, you know, just inside the cut, similar to the, the previous age of the, the timber cuts. But in addition to that, they're using those grassy logging roads to travel in between rubbing and scraping along the ways. The problem with trying to hunt on the interior of these cuts is that you can't find a tree that's usually good enough to be able to get into. It's usually thick with those trees in the six to 10 inch in diameter, sometimes even smaller yet. You can get in those in say, especially like with a saddle, you can get in those trees, but it's extremely difficult to be able to do so. So in my, in my opinion, it is still best to hunt the outskirts, hunt the edges, hunt those defined edges. So you have the thick clear cut that's behind me and in front of me in this situation we're in now, we have a newer cut where they select cut the area, took out all the underbrush and just have some big timber trees that creates a hard edge. That can be the same if you had a big oak ridge or something else where you're just breaking up that thick cover with more of the open timber. Those deer will run the edges. The same holds true as it was with the younger age clear cuts, those bucks are gonna travel that edge downwind side to be able to scent check for does in that cut. And when you have a situation like the one we have here where you have a newer cut right on the edge of it, it's bedding and feed right next to each other. It's a no brainer to set up right on the edge of this cut. So why the specific area along this three-year-old cut is so important to me is because we have the edge of some bigger timber and then you got the cut behind you and then also you have a big drop off over the hill and so you have terrain features that are meeting up with vegetation edges and just back i don't know it's about 80 yards behind me that's about where i'd want to be that's a little bit thicker cover in case those big bucks are going to try to skirt into the cut or they're going to skirt down over the hill if they don't want to walk through this wide open area they're gonna, especially during like early November, even into mid November, as they're cruising the edge of these cuts where the does are bedding on the interior, it can be a, just an absolute money spot. So I'm definitely paying attention to these and marking these types of areas when I'm out scouting. What I have behind me is a clear cut that's about three years old. And these cuts are the ones that I'm focusing on. Or probably my favorite out of all of the different cuts because 
it has thick enough cover now, some undergrowth coming up that it creates a bedding area, but it also has so much browse and food sources. You've got blackberry briars. You have some new growth coming up. You've got green grasses because the sun's still able to get through. And these deer are still feel comfortable moving through here in daylight, in and around the bedding areas feeding. And you can get up in a tree and see down through them. Even though it's so thick, you can get above. And since that brush and those briars and the new growth is high enough that it's above their head level, they seem to feel a lot more safe in those situations. So I pay attention a lot to these newer cuts, but especially when they get to about three years old. All variations of logging cuts have a different purpose to them as far as it relates to deer hunting. But what I love the most is I can find one that was select cut a few years ago. So you start having some new brows and stuff coming up, but still relatively new. And then behind is a really old, probably, I don't know, maybe a 15, 20 year old cut that I know from scouting in the spring had a bunch of bedding in it. And so what we have here behind me is some big timber. So it's, there's a bunch of beach brush and stuff mixed in, but right here makes an inside corner where all of those things meet. And so I always check out these spots. And as soon as I came in, I found a nice scrape right on the edge. I'm gonna throw a camera on. So a lot of times with clear cuts, so they'll come in, they'll go through what's called a shelter wood cut and they'll get rid of all the junk that's underneath it and leave some of the big trees. Well, then after five or six years, they'll come back in and spray it again if they need to. As you see, it's like kind of dead through here and it's in the middle of summer. They'll come through and they'll spray it again and then come through and cut all the big ones. And I've come to find that this year, like if they don't cut it this year, it can be really good because with the logging trails, all the vegetation off of it, and still some of the blackberry briars and things like that, they're still surviving and growing underneath it. That gives them security cover and just a nice wide open roadway to go down through and walk. And again, even though it's wide open, it's got so much security cover around it within this cut that it can be a really good spot to set up, especially during the rut and really even in the early season and the late season, depending on how much browse is available. So as you see, walking up this edge, Great branch. It's summer, so it's hard to see, but it's a good scrape right there on this inside corner. So what I would like for a wind is either something coming out of this way that blows out into this new cut, or also blowing out of this one where during the rut, the bucks will cruise right down along this edge, scent checking it. So I'd want to be set up back in one of these trees right here. I'd typically like to stay back into the cover rather than out into the cut, but that all depends on what the wind direction is doing. 